Hi, welcome back to The Garden Chef. I'm Henry Arce, and today we're gonna take a tenderloin of beef that's a lower grade cut. It's actually called ranch beef. And we're gonna show you how to prepare this with a venison marinade that will take a lower grade beef, yet remove a lot of the gamey flavors and prepare a wonderful meal for half the cost of, say, a prime tenderloin. So with that, we're gonna get started and welcome to The Garden Chef. Welcome back to The Garden Chef. Today, I'm going to show you how to do a venison marinade. However, I'm not using venison. I'm using tenderloin. And the reason I'm doing this with a, a, a game marinade is when dixie does specials on beef all throughout the South, there are Winn-Dixie stores. And they do a beef that's called rancher beef. They also have Angus beef, but the rancher beef is basically Mexican beef. And beef is graded from prime, choice, good, standard, utility. And pretty much the rancher beef is a standard grade beef. So it only makes sense to treat it like game. I paid $41 for this whole tenderloin. If I'd have bought a prime tenderloin, it probably would have cost me $120. So. You can't go wrong with a tenderloin. However, make it, make it taste good because beef comes in different grades. Prime, choice, good, standard, and utility. This is probably a standard grade, but the tenderloin is always going to be tender. It may be a little, a little more stringy than, uh, say, a, a restaurant-grade steak, but for the money, you can't beat this cut of meat. So. With the venison marinade, which is a, a cooked marinade, it'll break this down and it'll take a little bit of that, you know, wild, wild taste of a, a standard grade cattle. It'll take that out, it'll make its own flavor with the wine and, and all the vegetables. And this will make a fantastic meal for a decent budget. So. When dixies are all over the South, I always buy this when I see it. So with that, we'll get started and show you how to do it. All right. So when we break this down, we'll use certain cuts for other things. So this kind of flat, fatty area at the end is pretty much a tenderloin tail. And I'm just going to cut that off because I'll use this for something else, maybe just do some little appetizers or something, and I'll just peel all this, uh, all the fat and, and uh, silver, it's called, right off. It comes, comes off pretty easy, and there you got a nice lean piece of beef. This fat on the bottom side is considered melt-away fat, so when you cook that, that'll, that'll burn off. So I'm, I don't, I'm not necessarily going to clean that. And then this, this strip along the, the side of the beef, you can pretty much just hold the beef and pull that. And this has a lot of silver on it. And it would be very uncomfortable to chew. You don't want that in your food. So this is good for stews or, or uh, I, I probably will throw it in the marinade just to get a little bit more flavor in that. But uh, that takes that that strip along the side off, you pull it off and just cut it off. All right, so that's that. Now, there's all kinds of tissue on this meat, so we'll just 
go at it, cut it off, and clean it as much as you can, just pulling it with your hand. And then that exposes the silver right here. So on the silver, what you do is you just take a sharp boning knife, cut it out and follow the meat down and then follow it all the way up to the tip and pull that off. This is not palatable, so you just throw it away. And like I say, I'll probably throw this into the marinade or in my beef stock just to give it a little bit more flavor. Now, if you start here and pull the silver off and then run your knife towards the, the, the front of the meat, it comes off a little easier than going this direction because if you see, see it takes a little bit more meat. So you're going to clean that, roll it over, and get all of that off your meat. It might take a little practice, but this is not hard. You do need a sharp knife though. See how that's getting nice and lean? Now this is a side muscle here. You could cut that side muscle off. I don't. What I do is I trim it down in between that muscle as much as I can. You're not going to get it all out if you keep it on, but a little bit's not bad. We'll take that fat out there. That's looking pretty good. Now I'm not going to cut this up into steaks because when I cook this, I'm going to cook the whole tenderloin. So now when you flip it over, you got a little tail here on that side muscle. And we'll take this off. And I'm going to cut that tail and add that to my tenderloin tail here because that's good lean beef. And there's another little piece here that I'm going to cut off. I'll probably do some teriyaki beef tips or something like that. Make a little snack or an appetizer with that, that meat. Okay, then now you've got this fat. So you can just take your knife and run it along the fat and it kind of peels that off and cleans it. There you go. I don't know why that's cut there when whoever butchered this took a chunk out of that. We'll throw that over there. A little bit more over here. There you go. Now, now what you have is a peeled clean tender. All right, so now if you were cutting steaks, you just cut this across here and you'd have eight ounce steaks. From right here to right here is the chateau if you want to do a chateau brillant. And then you got the, the, the side muscle and the, the cap over here. And you can still make a steak out of that. But like I say, what I'm doing is I'm making a whole roast and we're going to put this on the grill. So that cleans your meat. This is ready to go. We'll just set it in the pan and get it rid of this board. And now we're going to prepare the marinade. I've got carrots. I'm not going to peel them. We're just going to rough cut them. Well, I'll take that off. Celery. and onions. And on my onions, I'm not going to waste good onions, so what I'm going to do is just cut the bottoms and tops off the onion, split it, peel it, and I'll keep the nicer cut of the onion for, for cooking rather than throwing it all in 
the marinade because we're not going to eat these vegetables. This is for flavor. So skin and all, you just once again cut them, split them, and just pull that thick layer off the top. I got three onions, that'll be enough. And this gives us our mirepoix, along with garlic, black peppercorn, and bay leaf. That is going to start the marinade. And I'll take these onions and put them in a Ziploc, hold them in the refrigerator, and I can use this when I'm cooking something that's actually going to go on the table. Now, you can throw all of this in. It doesn't matter. I have some fresh herbs from the garden. I've got thyme, oregano, flat leaf parsley. I actually had some curly leaves, so I took that as well, and some fresh sage. And this is not something, once again, I want flavor. And I'm just going to rough chop this. I'm not going to pick it. I'm not going to do anything like that. This is just going to go in there. And the thyme and the oregano. Okay, so we have our herbs, we have our vegetables. Everything's prepped up. And we're going to move over to the stove, show you how to cook this. And one last thing, when we're talking about the meat, I was saying I was going to take all these scraps and I was going to throw them in the marinade. I can, but I've changed my mind because in a restaurant I would have had gallons of beef stock and beef stock is kind of hard to come by unless you've got a butcher out there saving you bones. So I'll probably use a off the market uh, beef stock. But I'll take this and I'll put it in the oven and I'll roast it, get it brown, maybe put a little bit of tomato paste on it so it gets nice and brown. And then I'll boil this with just a, a store-bought beef stock and it'll put that flavor into it for later when we make the, the, when we cook the meat, I can use that stock for making my sauce. So we're going to move over to the stove, I'll show you how to put this together. Okay. Got the saute pan. We're going to put that on high heat. I've actually, to speed this up a little bit, I got that pan pretty hot. So, I'm going to take a little olive oil. You can tell that pan's hot by the way that oil hits it and runs. Get that a nice hot coating on there. I'm going to pull my herbs out first. And I'm going to dump them vegetables in. That's what I'm talking about. Now, I'm not going to put salt or anything like that in here because it is a marinade. So if this meat sits in salt for 24 hours, you're going to make it tough. So it's just the vegetables. We're going to cook them to get the rawness out of them. And we're going to add some chopped garlic to it. And I'm going to add a lot of cho chopped garlic. And while we're talking about Charlotte, Charlotte, while we're talking about garlic, i got to make mention to my buddy Hank in Seattle, who is the garlic man, who sends me garlic. And by the way, I need some ginger and garlic and shallots, Hank. This is for you. So, with that being done, I, I satisfied what I told him I would do. We've got a nice mirepoix going on here. We'll let that cook for a minute. we got whole peppercorns. And... This is going to put a good flavor in the meat. The only thing is it's a good idea after the meat comes out of the marinade to pick the peppercorns off. So we'll just add a few of them into this. Got some bay leaves. I wish I had fresh, but for some reason in Florida, I can't get my bay leaves to grow worth a damn. So, bay leaves. And you can do this with white wine or red wine. 
I'm doing it with red. I'll save my white. This is a good red. This is a Murphy Good Cabernet. I happen to like Mr. Murphy. He's a great guy. And we'll add that into our veg. Now I had this with dinner the other night, so it's been open. That's why I'm using this for this. But we just opened this up another bottle so that we can enjoy our cooking. So this is now boiling. We'll let that cook for a few minutes and we'll add our herbs to it. Once again, thyme, oregano, parsley, sage, I didn't have any rosemary. You can throw some rosemary in here. And especially if you are actually cooking venison, you should throw some juniper berries in here. But this is what we have. It's all good. We'll stir that up. I actually think I'm going to need a little more liquid in this. But what's happening is when you say this is a cooked marinade, cooking these vegetables releases the flavor of the vegetables. So you get it good and hot, then we're going to chill this down. When it's chilled, we'll pour it over our meat, put it away for 24 hours, and we'll be ready to cook. So actually, I want a little more liquid in that. Since I just opened that red one, I'm going to drink it. So I'll add some white to this. It'll do the same thing. All right. There you go. This is done. That's our marinade. One thing. When this is, has cooled down, we'll add olive oil to this as well. So, there you go. This preparation for... Venison is called en chevrol. What can I say? It's our Mexican beef marinade. That's that. We're back with our marinade. We let it cool off. It's taking about an hour to cool down. It's kind of lukewarm at this point. So now I'm going to add a little olive oil to this. It finishes the marinade off. And it'll also, when we throw the meat on the grill, it'll help it not stick. So, real earthy smell here. Very, uh, very cool marinade here. And I've decided I'm going to cut this in half because I'm going to cook this on the grill. So I'll just cut that right in half. See a nice, nice looking tenderloin. A little marbling in there. Actually, not bad meat at all. We'll take this, pull it around here, and we'll just pour this right on top. Oh, that came right out of there, didn't it? I was thinking I was gonna like gently put it on there, but that didn't happen. Okay. So now. We'll just roll that in there really good. And every once in a while I'll go and turn it. And keep all that on. As a matter of fact, I may even put this in a plastic bag. Because then it'll sit in that marinade better and it'll cover it all the way around. But you want to get those vegetables and garlic and peppercorns, the wine. You want to get that all around that meat. 24 hours later. We'll come back and we'll be ready to throw this on a grill and then slice it up and then manger. Okay, till we see you later. That's how we marinate the meat. Okay, we're back and we've taken our tenderloin and we've marinated for 24 hours. We've kind of scraped all the marinade off of it. You can see it's picked up some really nice color and it even feels a little more tender just from the acids in the the wine and and all the vegetables and we're going to take this out of here 
I'm trying to make sure I get most of those uh, peppercorns off. You don't want to bite into a peppercorn when you're eating your beef, but you want that flavor in there. So this is ready for the grill. The oil that uh, we marinate in will stop it from um, <clears throat> sticking on the, on the grates. And meanwhile, our marinade here, as you can see, it's gotten a little bit of blood out of the meat, which is fine. We're going to cook that out. And if you remember the scraps, when we trim the meat out, I've taken that and I've browned it in a little bit of olive oil, got it nice and brown, cooked in really good. I add a little bit of tomato to it so that uh, I get a nice brown color to my stock. And now what we're going to do is take the actual marinade, if we can get it all in the pot, and we're going to bring this up, cook it off, and add some beef broth to it, and then we're going to cook this for about, uh, we're going to try and reduce it by about half, then we'll strain it, and this is going to be the base for our sauce after we cook our beef. So I have about four cups of beef stock. I'll throw that in there. And that everything in there, the, the beef scraps that we've browned off, that's all gonna cook into this and put it a real nice beefy flavor. Then we'll add some cognac and some we're going to get, get that up to a simmer or a nice roll and then we'll turn it down and we'll let that cook until it reduces all the liquid down to about half. It's not going to make a really good demi-glaze because I really don't have bones in there for the, for the protein, but what it's going to have is a really good beef flavor and, and we'll, we'll make a sauce. So now we're going to go out to the kitchen and we're going to grill our beef. All right, we're out in the kitchen now, outdoor kitchen. Listen to the crickets and the tree frogs. Nice breeze. And we have our meat fully marinated. And it's about to go on the grill. Now, you, I have not put any kind of salt on this meat at all. Because we've been marinating and if it had been salted earlier, it would have made it tough. So I never salt my meat until it's ready to go on the grill. So. Good thing to know, and also um, if you were doing something with a sugar marinade, you shouldn't do that either, because sugar will dry out your meat faster than salt will. So we're ready to go. We have it marinated. I've salted one side, and I'm going to start this here. A nice sear. Then I'll salt the other side. Now the idea now is that we're going to sear this all the way around, get it all those juices and flavors all seared into the meat so they don't run away, and we'll cook it to 120 degrees in the center, be nice and medium rare. We'll pull it off and then we'll let it set for about 15 minutes before we cut it. And then we'll be ready to eat. So, start to finish, you clean the steak, peel all the silver off, put it in a pan and marinate it with an all chevrol marinade, which is red wine, celery, onion, garlic, bay leaves, herbs, cooked with red wine and then marinated for 24 hours. So this standard grade beef will have its own flavor now and it will be delicious. Now, I have this meat at an angle because I want some nice marks on it. So we'll let it sit there just a couple minutes and then we'll turn it just like that. Do it again.
and that'll put some nice diamond marks on the meat. And we'll cook this probably for about maybe 15 minutes before it's done. And we'll get it seared all the way around. I'm going to say this has been cooking for 15 to 20 minutes, maybe 18 minutes is better, you know, somewhere in between. And it's just about where I want it. And uh, we probably flipped this 10 times, maybe 12. I don't know, but you can figure that out. You can kind of feel it. It's right at medium rare. Great flavor. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this off. Set it on my pan, and then I'm going to let it set for about 15 minutes because taking it off that heat, it's still cooking, and it'll set up, and some of the juices will kind of come together, and so when we slice it, we won't lose all those juices. So we got about maybe 10, 15 minutes. We'll slice this, and we'll sit on eat dinner. All right, we've, we've let our, our beef set for about 15 minutes. It should be medium rare. Well, we're going to see right now. And we're going to do a nice plate presentation. Ah, there we go. I'd say that's medium rare. Maybe a little rare. I like my meat rare anyway. Nice and crusty on the outside. It feels really tender. So, we'll slice this up like little turner does. And getting on the fatter side there. I'd say that looks pretty, pretty nice. We'll take our platter. Just lay that on there. May as well cut the other one up. Pour this in my sauce. So I cooked this to 120 degrees, which is medium rare. And uh, once it's set up, it cooked a little longer, but I mean, that's a perfect cook right there. And you see, as we get into it, where we have the side muscles and so forth, it gets a, a few different grains on it. But I think this is going to be really good, and I think everyone's going to love it. So I made some demi brabant potatoes. So serve it in here. Is it a nice presentation for the table? some vegetables on there. We'll put a little lemon and butter on the beans and the cauliflower, which will give it a nice little zesty taste. And there we have it. A lot of steps, a little bit of work, no big deal. And then, we have our sauce. Now this was the reduction of the, of the marinade with the beef stock. 
We add a little bit of roux to tighten it up with some shallots and some garlic and cognac. And I'll just run that around the outside there. And we'll put a little on the table. And now we have it. Bon Appetit. And we're going to love it. Hell yes. <laughs> Let's eat.